Hi, my name's Chris Unwin, and I'm a solution architect at Redgate. Now today, I'm going to show you how the Redgate SQL tool belt, specifically SQL change automation migrations, integrates with Jenkins. Now, I have an example database set up right here in SQL Server Management Studio, the voice of the DBA dev database. Now, the voice of the DBA dev, I have linked to my voice of the DBA Jenkins project. And you'll notice that in version control, I have no changes to my project. That is because I have already pushed any changes to my repo. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm using everything just on one virtual machine. And that includes my local repository, which is here under working folders, and my remote repository, which is here under VCS repositories. So this is ultimately where I'm pushing to. Now, in that Git repository, I also have a Jenkins file. So to enable us to actually carry out the build of the database, and as you can see here, there is my project, voice of the DBA, Jenkins, with the necessary filter files, the migrations, the pre and post deployment scripts, programmable objects, etc. So this has all been scripted out into my local repository. In that same local repository, I also have a Jenkins file. Now, the Jenkins file is the Jenkins pipeline as code option that allows us to specifically uh, choose the stages um, as part of configuration as code uh, as to how our database is built and deployed. And what this is going to do is actually make calls to the Redgate SQL change automation PowerShell components that I have installed here on this particular machine. Now you can notice that we've defined a number of variables at the top of the script. So we're actually defining the instance that we're using for integration, acceptance, production, um, which as you can see are all the same. But I have a number of different environments on this same machine, integration, acceptance, production, etc., that I'm using for the build and deployment. Now we have a couple of stages. You can see I've got uh, stage build here where we check out our uh, SCM. From there, we then run some PowerShell, which is actually building the database. So we're creating a uh, build artifact, invoke database build. Then we create the build artifact after that successful build and export that build artifact as well. So. After a successful build, we then move on to the unit test stage. This is obviously an optional stage at which point we can invoke our database tests where they are available. So that is the T SQL T unit testing framework. For us, that is actually a separate project, a test project that we use in combination with our database project. And that makes filtering out test objects much easier. We then have a stage to deploy to integration. And all this is doing is taking that build artifact and then it is carrying out the deployment by using that database release artifact to then deploy to our integration environment. After there, we deploy to acceptance, basically taking the same uh, process. But in this particular case, we're actually using SQL clone to build an acceptance environment from production and actually rep replace our acceptance environment so that we can verify our deployments against a release candidate. Once we've done this, we then have an approval gate and that allows us to review the deployments to the different environments and also to the acceptance environment that's just been refreshed from a clone. And assuming we have looked at all of the release artifacts and the reports and the clone and verified that everything works, we can then just approve that and go ahead and deploy to production. Now, in this particular case, we're actually using a previous release artifact. We're actually using the release artifact that we created against our acceptance environment. Acceptance looking exactly the same as production, so we're fine to reuse that artifact instead of creating a new one and putting additional overhead on production. Now that's all in source control with my voice of the DBA project. So let's go ahead and make a change to the voice of the DBA dev database. 
So I'm going to go ahead and include a new stored procedure. So we're going to use SQL prompt to create a new stored procedure for us. So I'll do CP and we'll call it get articles from the articles table. There we go. Expand out that wildcard, of course, best practices and apply our format. So we've made that change. Now it's time for us to very quickly make a table change as well. So here's the contacts table and I'm going to hit design on that. And we'll add the MySpace column. We're nice and up to date. We're actually including columns for the handles that we're going to gather from our uh, various customers. Now I'm going to generate the migration scripts for these changes. Of course, being a stored procedure, the get articles stored proc actually goes into a programmable object state based script. And then the migration script itself, as you can see, is that necessary alter table. And I can format that again to my team format, save the change to the migration script, hit done. Of course, naturally, we want to verify that these changes are going to work as well. Yep, that's all good. They've run against our shadow database and we're good to now put these changes in version control. So I'm going to go ahead and include my commit details. So I'm going to include a commit with a smiley face, hit commit and push. Now this has been pushed to my Jenkins repository and actually I have it configured to pull my source uh, for any changes every minute. So let's actually have a look at the configuration of that pipeline. So because we're using pipeline as code, this is a Jenkins pipeline job. You can see that we are polling uh, our SCM every minute. Maybe we should be doing that less often, but we're doing it every minute to pick up those changes. And then once we actually get into the pipeline, we're using a pipeline script from within our source code system. We're using Git. There's the repository URL. And we've just specified it is the Jenkins file that we are using. Now, if we come back to our project, we can see that uh, uh, we've had a couple of uh, failed builds, but then we've also had some successful ones as well. And build number 16 has just been queued there. Our pipeline has just been queued again. And we can actually go and take a slightly closer look at this by looking at the console output. And you can see it's starting to now validate those files. If we go back to the project, we can also jump into our Blue Ocean plugin, uh, which will allow us to uh, visualize the stages of this process. So we can see the build was successful. Blue Ocean, probably my favorite plugin for Jenkins, apart from Redgate SQL change automation. So the build has been queued and run and it was successful. And the NuGet package, the result was actually successfully uh, archived there. There we go. Then we ran the unit tests as well. And now we're carrying out the deploy to integration. So the deploy to integration has happened and we can actually just come in and refresh our databases to view that. If SSMS can keep up, there we go. So voice of the DBA integration, we should expect now for those changes to be propagated. There's the MySpace column that's been automatically deployed for us. We validated our continuous delivery. Now, if we jump back in, we can see that the deploy to acceptance is happening. Now, we should notice a, uh, that the acceptance environment is now currently being replaced with a clone of our current production environment. As soon as that's done, we will then deploy to acceptance. And that has indeed happened. Now we're at the approval gate, though. So it's time for us to view any uh, any test output in this case. Our one test that we have queued is passing. Excellent. We can see the changes that were included in this as a result of polling our source code system. And we can also see the artifacts that we have published. So the build artifact is there, the new get package. And then we also have the release components. So we've got a drift report telling us if there's any drift against the target. That's obviously acceptance being in an uncertain uh state to what we expect. We've got the full deployment script if we want to review it. 
But the easiest way to do this is to jump into the changes.html file. This highlights for us the new get articles stored procedure and the contacts table change. We can see the full script from here, any associated comparison warnings, and of course, any code issues as well. In this case, the parameter declared but never used. Now we're happy with all of that. The deployments have all happened successfully. I can now go ahead and hit I approve the deployment. And you can do that from, in my case, right here in the Blue Ocean plugin, or I can jump back into Jenkins itself. And if we come back into our dashboard, we could even have approved from here and uh, obviously we can see the logs and we're, we're seeing the stage view here obviously that's defined for us by that Jenkins file. And then of course there's only one thing left to do and that is of course to verify that the deployment has successfully been promoted to our production environment. So let's go ahead and double check that. Tables, open up the contacts table. And there it is, there's our MySpace column. So our changes have been propagated. We have validated our changes. We've tested them, we've built them, we've published a NuGet package. We've then gone ahead and deployed to validate our continuous delivery capabilities, built a clone, deployed to it as a release candidate, reviewed our release artifacts, and then promoted up to production, our nice small incremental migration scripts for our deployments. So that's just about it. And it's all thanks to SQL change automation and what we had in that Jenkins file. Thanks for stopping by.